Manila is a city of contrasts. On one hand, it is the beating heart of the Philippines, a center of culture, commerce, and politics. On the other, it is a city choked by traffic, burdened by outdated infrastructure, and threatened by rising seas. More than 14 million people live and work in Metro Manila, and every day they face the same challenges. Endless commutes, crowded airports, and neighborhoods vulnerable to flooding. For decades, the capital has dreamed of solutions. Now, at last, those dreams are becoming reality. Across the metropolis and its surrounding provinces, nine massive projects are underway projects so large and transformative that they will redefine how people move, work, and even survive in the years to come. At the heart of this transformation is the long-awaited Metro Manila subway project, the first true underground mass transit system in the Philippines. After decades of planning and delays, giant tunnel boring machines imported from Japan are finally carving their way beneath the city, stretching roughly 33 kilometers kilometers from Quezon City all the way to the Ninoy Aquino International Airport, the subway promises a future where a journey that once took hours in gridlocked traffic will take barely 35 minutes. Built with flood-resistant engineering and backed by a multi-billion peso loan from the Japan International Cooperation Agency, the project is sometimes called the project of the century. By the time partial operations begin in the latter half of this decade, hundreds of thousands of daily commuters will descend into cool, air-conditioned stations rather rather than battle Manila's humid roads. While the subway digs beneath the capital, another giant is rising to the north. In Bulacan province, the new Manila International Airport, often called the Bulacan Airport, is taking shape on reclaimed coastal land. This four-runway complex, spearheaded by San Miguel Corporation, is designed to handle up to 100 million passengers every year, more than triple the capacity of the aging NAIA. With a price tag estimated at over 700 billion pesos, it is one of the most expensive infrastructure projects in Philippine history. Engineers are building the airport on an elevated, climate-resilient platform designed to withstand typhoons and rising sea levels, a critical consideration for a low-lying country. When its first phase opens later in the decade, travelers will enter a terminal meant to rival the best in Asia, positioning the Philippines as a genuine regional aviation hub. Yet Manila's existing gateway will not be abandoned. The government has approved a massive rehabilitation of Ninoy Aquino International National Airport itself, a project worth roughly 170 billion pesos. Private consortiums are upgrading runways, expanding terminals, and overhauling baggage systems so that the airport can handle more than 60 million passengers a year by 2028. For a city whose tourism and business links depend on reliable air travel, the simultaneous development of a new airport and the modernization of the old one offers a double solution to decades of congestion. Railways, too, are being reborn, stretching far beyond the subway's urban tunnels, the North-South Commuter Railway, or NSCR, will run nearly 150 kilometers from the fast-growing Clark region in Pampanga down to Calamba in Laguna. This electrified, high-capacity line, built with support from the Asian Development Bank and Japanese partners, will allow people to travel from one end of Luzon's economic corridor to the other in under two hours, a journey that today can take half a day by car. Elevated viaducts are rising above highways and rice fields, promising not just speed but resilience against floods. Construction has been divided into multiple segments, with partial operations targeted for the mid-2020s and full service by the end of the decade. For commuters, it means the chance to live farther from Manila's crowded core without sacrificing job opportunities in the capital. Within the business heart of the metropolis, another underground system is quietly advancing. The Makati subway project, a 10-kilometer loop circling the Philippines' premier financial district, is designed to to link key commercial centers like Ayala Avenue and Rockwell. Backed by a combination of local and Chinese investment, the project aims to serve hundreds of thousands of riders every day. By creating a quick, weatherproof way to move around the central business district, the Makati subway will free surface roads for pedestrians and cyclists while reinforcing the city's role as the country's economic engine. But building upward and underground is not enough for a city that sits on the edge of the sea. Rising waters in Manila Bay threaten to inundate coastal communities and business districts during powerful typhoons. In response, an ambitious set of Manila Bay reclamation and integrated flood control projects is underway. These include massive 
massive seawalls, storm surge barriers, and newly reclaimed islands that will host entire mixed-use communities. Projects such as Pase Harbor City, Manila Waterfront City, and the Navodas Coastal Development will create hundreds of hectares of new land while shielding existing neighborhoods from storm surges. Supporters envision glittering waterfront skylines and new commercial hubs. Critics warn of ecological risks and the displacement of fishing communities. Whatever the debate, the sheer scale of earth moving and engineering on the bay signals that Manila is determined to fight both the sea and the shortage of urban space. Perhaps the most dramatic of all these undertakings will not tunnel under the earth or reclaim it from the sea but instead soar across open water. The planned Batan y Cavita Interlink Bridge, often nicknamed the Manila Bay Bridge, will stretch an astonishing 32 kilometers across the bay, connecting the provinces of Batan and Cavita in a single four-lane link. Today, traveling between these regions requires a five-hour drive around the bay. Once the bridge is completed, the journey will take less than 40 minutes. Funded through a mix of Philippine government resources and foreign loans, the bridge will open new trade routes and bind together the northern and southern halves of Luzon, reshaping logistics and tourism across the region. These headline projects are accompanied by smaller but no less important connections. Extensions of the South Commuter Railway, which forms part of the broader NSCR system, are bringing modern train service deeper into Laguna, linking residential suburbs and industrial hubs to the capital. Meanwhile, an innovative BGC NAIA, Makati Skitran will soon glide above the streets between Makati and Bonifacio Global City, offering a quick, driverless transfer to the airport in as little as 15 minutes. Though shorter and less costly than the giant subway or Bay Bridge, these projects embody Manila's embrace of new, greener technologies for urban mobility. Together, these nine mega projects, the Metro Manila Subway Project, the New Manila International Airport, the Ninoy Aquino International Airport Rehabilitation, the North South Commuter Railway, the Makati Subway Project, the Manila Bay Reclamation and Integrated Flood Control Projects, the Batand Cavita Interlink Bridge, the South Commuter Railway Extension, and the BGC NAIA. Makati Skitran represent more than just concrete and steel. They are the Philippines' answer to decades of underinvestment and the mounting pressures of climate change. Economists estimate that the combined cost of these undertakings reaches well into the trillions of pesos, but the payoff could be enormous. Millions of jobs during construction, faster trade and tourism growth, and a leap in productivity as people spend less time stuck in traffic and more time creating value. For everyday Manilinos, the impact will be personal. A nurse in Calamba may soon take a clean, electric train to a hospital job in Quezon City without spending half her day on the road. A family in Cavita will be able to drive across Manila Bay to visit relatives in Batan in less than an hour. Travelers landing at the new Bulacan Airport will board a sleek subway car that that whisks them directly to the city center, bypassing the gridlock that once defined a trip to Manila. The road, or rail, or bridge toward this future is not without challenges. Funding must remain steady despite political changes. Environmental safeguards need to be enforced to protect fragile coastal ecosystems. Construction delays, inevitable in projects of this magnitude, will test public patience. Yet the momentum is unmistakable. Cranes rise above the skyline, boring machines rumble underground, and and reclaimed land steadily emerges from the waters of the bay. Manila has long been known for its chaos, traffic jams that stretch for kilometers, airport terminals bursting at the seams, and floods that arrive with every typhoon. But with these nine mega projects, the city is writing a new story. It is a story of ambition, of a capital that refuses to be defined by its problems and instead builds its way into the future. Whether it's the subway tunneling silently beneath the streets, the colossal bridge leaping across the sea, or the airports welcoming travelers from around the world, each project is is a promise that Manila is ready to rise. As the sun sets over the bay and the cranes continue their slow dance against the skyline, one question remains for the millions who call this city home. Which of these transformations will touch your life first? Will you be among the first passengers on the subway, the first drivers across the Bay Bridge, or the first travelers to land at the gleaming new airport? One thing is certain, Manila is changing, and the future is already under construction.